What is one of the most important things? No, no, no. What is one of the most valuable things in a studio? The aux cable, the coffee maker, the bathroom, maybe. Those are all totally fair points. So let me say this. One of the most valuable things that you have in your studio is time. That's right, time is money, literally. No matter what the situation is, there are some things that you have to do that are just annoying. Wrapping cables, putting things away, taking out the trash, cleaning the coffee machine, sweeping up dog hair, cleaning the bathroom, cleaning anything. My favorite parts of my workflow are the parts that save me the most time. Today, you are gonna start, that's right, you are gonna start saving some time for the important things. For creativity, for coffee, for smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. One of the things that helps me save a ton of time in the studio is using templates as well as importing session. Why can I not say se session? Importing session data. Listen, I don't care about templates or date session data, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you do. Trust me. Because this is so mind blowingly unfun to do, I'm going to try to make this as fast and as easy as possible to knock out so that you can start saving time right now. Step one, create a new session. All right, session created. Step two, add all of the tracks that you plan on using for whatever it is that you're recording. In this case, I'm going to be building a template for recording drums in my studios with my setup. So the tracks that I'm going to add are as follows. First, click track. Second, one stereo master track. One, two, three, four aux tracks two stereo audio tracks, seven mono audio tracks. Okay, so I'm gonna add all of these. So these tracks include everything that I would need to record live drums in my home studio with my setup. Step three, label all the tracks. Master Fader, my first aux is going to be my mix bus that I send all of my music through. Next is going to be my drums bus that all of my drum audio will be submixed through. Next is going to be my drums parallel effects track. Lastly is going to be my drum room reverb. So I've got my click track, my master track, my auxiliary tracks, and I'm going to label my individual drum tracks now. Okay, so I've got my drum audio tracks here. My two stereos are going to be for my overheads and rooms. So I'm gonna do my overheads there and then my rooms here. I'm gonna label them according to the input. So this will be kick in dot zero one, snare top dot zero one. The dot zero one indicates the playlist take number. Rack tom one. Okay, number four, assign all of the inputs and outputs for all of the tracks. All my inputs for my drum mics are set. Now I'm gonna go to my buses, and I actually have all my buses labeled permanently so that when I go through and have my template, everything has its bus already labeled, so I don't actually have to change anything. Another step to make this process go even faster. All right, and then drum room is going to be a drum room reverb. Okay, I'm gonna make all of these auxiliary tracks solo safe, meaning if I solo any of my audio tracks, it's not gonna be muted by the aux. All right, so now I'm gonna set the output to my drum audio tracks to my drum bus. So I'm gonna go into bus and select drum. I'm doing shift option when I do that. So all of these tracks are now outputting to my drum bus. All right, now my drum bus is going to output to my all music auxiliary, which is my mix bus. Now I just repeat the same thing for my effects buses. So everything here is going to my mix bus, which is labeled all music. Okay, so everything winds up going through this fader before it hits that actual master fader. Now you can and should have your own personal way of 
having different auxes and different ways that you route things. This is just the setup that applies to how I like to have my drums. The next step is just simply to add the plugins that you like to use. Now these don't have to be all of the plugins that you will finally be using, but the ones that you know you like to use and you consistently use, add them into the tracks right now so that you don't have to go through the menus and adding stuff later. You can bypass it if you don't need it, but it saves you just that little bit extra time of clicking around and going through menus when it's already there ready to use. So first on my mix bus, what I like to do is I'll use an EQ. The first EQ I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the Infinity EQ from Slate Digital because I, I like to experiment with the EQ that's on the mix bus. So I'm gonna add the Infinity EQ first. Next, I'm going to add a compressor and the compressor I'm going to use is going to be this virtual bus compressor from Slate, the red. Next, I like to add the Isotope Ozone plugin and I keep this bypass. This one I just really like to have because it's such a powerful plugin that you can, it just does crazy stuff. And I like, like to have it up and ready just in case you wanna see how it sounds. And then last, I add in the Pro L2 because the Pro L2, if you didn't know, is just a banger of a limiter. Super good. I'm gonna leave both the limiter and ozone bypassed so that the mix bus just has the EQ ready to go and the compressor ready to go. Now I haven't set any of the settings to these. They're just ready to set. So once I record, I can just literally just touch it and start tweaking away. Next, I'm going to add the processing on my drum bus. So yes, similarly, I like to use an EQ. I'll use the FabFilter Pro Q3. For boosting, I like to use the UAD Pultec EQP1A because I love the freak, I love everything about it. It's a great boosting EQ. And then lastly, I just add a compressor. I like the FG Gray from Slate for my drums. I actually do have a pretty consistent setting that I will put this on, which is just the three millisecond attack and then the auto release for the drums and I put it at a three, three to one ratio. And then I don't touch the threshold until I've actually recorded drums. Then I can just grab one knob and get the compression that I like to hear on my drum bus. All right, moving right along. Drum effects bus processing. I personally use the Sound Toys decapitator. So I'm going to add on the decapitator, boom. Now. This is one of the few plugins that I have a setting that I will load because I just love it for this purpose, which is just a nice texture to add to the drums. So I go, it's actually a preset of theirs. You go to drums, and it's the first one, it's called 70s Record. Now the, I'll make a couple of tweaks personally. I add in a little more of the high end. I roll back the tone to make it darker, kind of up towards the middle. And then I'll peel back the low cut a little bit so that there's more of that low end uh, push mixed in and then I just pull the output down a little bit. Now that just leaves the last thing which is to add the drum room reverb plugin. Now there's a bunch of great reverbs that you could choose from. I'm going to use the East West QL Spaces plugin because they have presets of their own tracking rooms that they have emulated. So I'm going to add in the East West Studio, Studio 2, load that in. I'm gonna pull the dry signal out, crank up the input signal a little bit, and crank up the wet signal a little bit, okay. And that's it, that's what I like to have available up and ready on my drum template. So for instance, I'm gonna track some drums for a couple projects right now. By the way, hit up andrewmastersmusic.com, you can book me on the calendar and I will be able to drum on your project right here in my home studio. andrewmastersmusic.com, go check it out link in the description. So when I go over to my drums to sit down, I already have everything grouped. I just grab, select my tracks. I can take my keyboard and mouse over to the drum kit, hit record, and then everything shows up. I can flip through, I can start doing takes. Since I added dot zero one to my track names, I can right off the bat start playlisting and punching right without even having to stand up from the drum kit. In addition to that, I can actually do a project, finish up, stop, close the session, switch to another session, import these tracks into that session, doing zero work and start tracking drums on that project. Super fast. Now the whole point of this is save time. Save as much time as you can because this whole thing, 
you should really only have to do this a little bit. Like doing it once is enough. And then if you, there's things you wanna try and experiment with, you can make adjustments to it, but you don't have to create, if you're using the same mics, the same inputs, the same routing and stuff like that, you shouldn't have to do that every single time you start a new session or add on the same plugins that you know you like, that you know you're gonna use. Have a template set and then you can start that template or import that data and make small adjustments. It's just the little things when you get a process like this, you can turn it into a system and repeat it. And when you start adding up all these little systems together, then you create a very efficient workflow. And that's what it's all about is minimizing the time you have to spend typing in the names of tracks and maximizing the time that you spend making sick beats. If you like the video, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this. If you have any suggestions for cool effects or plugins or anything I should check out, let me know down in the description and I will see you in the next video. Peace.